celebrities like Cher, to presidential candidates, to the media, all eyes are on Flint. But long before its city's water problems became a political issue, making international headlines, it was a medical mystery. He wasn't gaining weight, he was experiencing hair loss. Shortly after switching from Detroit water to the Flint River, questions about the quality of Flint's water were raised. But the Department of Environmental Quality assured everyone the water was safe. So what motivated the medical detectives to investigate a mystery DEQ officials didn't even believe existed? Dr. McGeorge is the story of a persistent parent and a determined doctor. In April 2014, when Flint switched to the Flint River for its water, Leanne Walters lived here in this Flint neighborhood. She soon became concerned. In November of 2014, my 14-year-old had gotten really sick. At like the tail end of him being sick, that's when our water started coming through brown. So we quit drinking it. Her family has since moved because her husband is in the military. So we spoke to her via Skype. She had a gut feeling something serious was wrong, and she contacted the city. At that point, we were like, okay, what's going on? So they came in, they started testing, and that's when we got our first high lead. And reached out to the MDEQ, and we really, we really weren't getting any responses. So, by February 2015, she contacted the EPA, who also began to investigate. At that point, I got hooked up with Miguel de Toro from the EPA, and started talking with him about the lead. And with talking to him, he actually seemed to care what I was saying. Her family continued to experience medical problems, the worst in one of her younger boys, Gavin. He was almost four. Uh, he wasn't gaining weight, he was experiencing hair loss. When he saw a doctor, his blood lead level was elevated. And remember, her family stopped drinking tap water months before. Frustrating was, knowing your child was poisoned, and three days later, your mayor, who knew, going on TV and telling, drinking the water and telling everybody the water was safe. In frustration, she made contact with Professor Mark Edwards at Virginia Tech. He's an expert in water quality. It was Mark Edwards that would challenge the safety findings by the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality. But that was only one critical piece of the puzzle that motivated public action. The other came from Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha, the pediatric residency director at Hurley Children's Hospital in Flint, starting with an innocent question. In late August, um, I had a dinner party at my house and a girlfriend was over and she happens to be a water expert. She used to work for the EPA Office of Drinking Water. And, and she's like, Mona, you know, have you heard about what's going on with Flint Water? I heard they didn't add corrosion control. I'm sure they have a lot of lead plumbing. Are you seeing kids with high lead levels? And that's kind of, you know, when I got motivated to work on this. Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha also holds a master's in public health, additional training that not all doctors possess. So the next day, I coincidentally had a meeting with the lead person from the county health department. And I asked him, point blank, I'm like, are you worried about the water? So she began digging, starting at her own hospital. The Hurley Children's Clinic sees the most Medicaid patients um, in the county. Important, because blood lead testing is required in children on Medicaid. We are mandated by Medicaid to screen children for lead at the ages of one and two. And that means she had access to test results for many children from before and after Flint's water had changed. We quickly ran our numbers and we saw an elevation um, in, the, in the percentage of lead poisoning. Dr. Uh, Hannah Atisha had a serious concern that she shared with the state, hopeful they would quickly share their data. Unfortunately, it was not forthcoming, so. On September 24th, um, with the greater medical community at my side, um, we released our preliminary research findings. A press conference is not the usual way to release medical research. But we had an ethical, moral obligation to alert our community of this ongoing risk. And the state pushed back, defending its findings. And that night we were attacked. I was attacked. Um, and I was called an unfortunate researcher, that I was causing near hysteria, um, that, you know, that these findings were not consistent with what the state um, had in terms of their database. Ultimately, though, her results were a catalyst for deeper investigation and, coupled with the issues raised by Leanne Walters and Professor Edwards, 
the state was forced to react. So the lesson here is sometimes just following a hunch when things don't seem right, well, it's just the right thing to do. Some wonder if there's another lesson here yeah. because we're all wondering, we all yeah. rely on water. How often is our water a risk to us? Well, fortunately, not very often. In fact, really hardly ever. Generally, though, the issues raised in Flint have brought lead exposure to the fore, to the map. And this is really a teachable moment. And the fact is, parents should be concerned about lead even if they do not live in Flint. So tomorrow at 5, I'm going to sit down with a Detroit lead expert to explain how the problem of lead has been in metro Detroit for decades, who's at risk, and specifically why. Yeah.